Okay, so uh, welcome, ag welcome again. I'm talking about location analytics, uh, real-time geofencing using uh, Kafka. My name is Guido Schmutz. I'm from uh, Switzerland, and I just uh, spent the last couple of days at Oracle Code 1 uh, because it's nearer to come here than to go to Switzerland. Uh, I thought it's, it's good to come back. I was already here uh, last uh, year, and it almost looks like Switzerland. So if you have never been to Switzerland, uh, it's very similar. We have snow as well, um, and mountains. OK, I'm working for a company called Triadis. It's a company uh, in, in Europe. We're operating in Switzerland, Germany, and Austria, and Denmark. Um, and we're doing things around Oracle, that was our past or still our current in some of our customers, but uh, I'm doing mostly big data and fast data. I'm working quite a lot with Kafka. I have a blog uh, where I present weekly the news in uh, stream processing. So if you want to keep up to date what's happening in stream processing, um, then maybe you want to follow that uh, blog. It's not my content, it's just uh, a list of links of other people's uh, content. Sometimes weekly is a bit uh, too much, then it's bi-weekly or two-weekly uh, or each, each two weeks, um, but I try to be uh, weekly. Good. So what will I talk uh, about uh, today? Um, first, an introduction and motivation. Why uh, geofencing and why geofencing with streaming? Then I'll talk about um, how I try to do it in KSQL, then how you can do it with Kafka Streams, and if we have enough time, I will also talk quickly about Tile 38. Um, I thought I can use the hour until 11 to prepare um, some of the demos, so uh, I think they're ready, but let's see uh, how good they will work. And at the end, I have something about visualization using Arcadia data. We have an hour uh, slot here, so uh, I think that I should quickly be able to cover as well. I have another presentation this uh, afternoon about streaming visualization, where Arcadia data will be a topic as well. So if I, if I won't have enough time or a lot of time to talk about Arcadia data, um, I will do that in uh, this afternoon's talk. OK, so that I have already done. So go, let's go to the introduction. We're not a large audience, um, so if you have questions, just feel free to interrupt me. You don't have to wait until uh, the end of the talk. So geofencing, what is it? Um, I borrowed that GIF from Tile38, which shows it quite well. Uh, the idea is that you have um, positional data from, let's say, vehicles, trucks. In my sample, uh, they are trucks, artificial trucks. I just have a simulator which um, uh, where trucks uh, drive around. It's actually only one truck, so it's, uh, we're able to see what, um, that it actually enters uh, a geofence. And then the idea is that you have geofences. And geofences, in that case here, is a circle. So it's a certain geographic area which is important uh, to you and where you might want to know that the truck is entering that geofence or that the truck is exiting that or leaves that uh, geofence. So, Possible events here can be I'm outside a geofence, I'm inside a geofence, I'm entering a geofence, and I'm exiting or leaving a geofence. Outside and in, uh, sorry, outside, of course, there's also a question uh, how, how far outside am I? If I have the whole world and I only have a geofence around a certain city, I probably don't want to know if the, the city is Bern, where I live in Switzerland, and I have trucks driving around here in Canada. I probably don't want to know that they're outside of Bern. It's too far away. <clears throat> so for what uh, kind of use cases uh, is that interesting? So if you have delivery services, you, you might uh, you might want to um, assign orders to a uh, service provider. Um, you have transportation, which you want to track. Transportation management, if you want to track uh, the flow of goods uh, on, uh, sorry, tr track the flow, uh, flow of people on a public transport uh, system, transport meditation management. Um, Uber, for example, is using it or is doing something similar for, for for estimated time of arrival as well, and of course with uh, geofences. I'm 
what I'm showing you today is from from my uh, from, from a, uh, a POC I've done just uh, for fun, kind of. I, tr I wanted to try out how good can I do that or how, how possible it is with k-sql to do it with k-sql. And in the last uh, a month ago, actually in August, I had a POC at a customer, uh, a steel, um, a company uh, producing steel in Germany. And where they want to use it is they have uh, ships or barges where they get the goods from from Netherlands, from Amsterdam, or from Rotterdam. That's where the the, the big uh, ships will arrive, and then the 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 raw material has to be transported to the production f facility, and that's over the Rhine. And they have like 80 uh, barges, and they are in the process of putting a geo sensor or or, or a, a sensor which provides the position to each of these single barges. And their problem at the moment is that they have no idea or not a lot of idea where these barges are. I mean, they know that they're, um, that they're on the way to their production facility, but when they are at the production facility, they have different uh, ho ho hovens where they, where they unload the material. And as soon as these uh, barges arrive there, they are not they have no mo motor. Um, they they don't really know where they where they are, so they have to use um, um, yeah optical and just look for them. And they wanted to have more control, so that's the whole idea of of using it. They they provide positional information every 15 minutes. So the question is, do you really need streaming in that uh, in that case? Because 80 every 15 minutes, there's not a lot of positions. But uh, the reason why we did it with streaming at that customer is because they also have a train system which they operate with lots of locomotives and, of course, um, uh, 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 wagons where they, uh, where they think about uh, adding some positional information as well, some sensors, so they know where their locomotives are. I'm not an expert in uh, geoprocessing. I'm also not an expert in visualization. I'm an expert on streaming, and that's where I know I know quite a lot about Kafka. And when I started to uh, think about geofencing, of course, you need to do something with uh, geoprocessing as well. And so I did some investigations what I could use, and there's the well-known text format, or WKT, um, which is quite helpful because with the well-known text format uh, or uh, well-known text, you, can, you can, can describe a point, you can describe a line string, you can describe a polygon. You can also describe a circle, of course. Um, and what I'm using for geofences, of course, is polygons. Because polygons, you're able to draw your uh, geofence. You could even have a geofence with a hole in the middle. So more like a, 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 a circle around or a polygon around it, but I've not used that. So by using that well-known text notation, I can just have an arbitrary complex uh, polygon and just describe it with that notation. And then of course, uh, you need some, some uh, operations to do on geo uh, coordinates. Uh, you want to know the distance. Uh, to a polygon, and for that the Geo tools is quite helpful. I need Java um, because um, you will see later with KSQL, uh, there's not a lot of uh, Geo uh, operations available out of the box, but of course you can write your own UDFs, user-defined functions, and if you want to write user-defined functions, then you have to have, uh, then you have to uh, use uh, Java for that. I guess uh, in Python, in the Python world, uh, the whole Geo support is much better than in Java, or at least uh, as good as in Java, but I need Java uh, just for that reason. So we'll talk about uh, Kafka quite a lot uh, in this talk, of course. So um, who of you are, is familiar with Kafka as a broker, the concept of the broker? I guess most of you, I hope, okay. Um, who is familiar with KSQL? Show hands. Kafka streams, a bit less. Okay, so I will talk a bit more uh, on, on in that area. So um, 
This is the Kafka ecosystem. If you get Kafka as open source, or if you get Kafka from, from Confluent, that's, ba that's basically what you get. You get the broker in the middle, and if you know um, topics from kind of traditional uh, message-oriented middleware, it, it's like a topic, it's publish subscribe. So a producer can produce messages to a topic, and the consumer can consume messages from a topic. You can do that directly from Java, which is not even shown here, or from Python, or from any language where you have support uh, for Kafka. But in the Kafka ecosystem, there are also components which help you to move data into Kafka and data out of Kafka without having to write a single line of code. And that's Kafka Connect, that's the green parts. So in, uh, and not, a lot of, not all people using Kafka or know about, which know about Kafka knows that there's more than just the broker. And so this green part, this Kafka Connect, is just the framework. So it's just the, the, the possibility to then start a connector and the connector does the work. So in, Kafka, in, in, the Kafka frame, in the Kafka open source project, you get the connector framework. And the connector framework has two options for connectors. One is a source connector, another one is a, a sync connector. Source connectors are for bringing data into Kafka, and sync connectors are for bringing data out of Kafka. So that's one way of um, getting data into Kafka is by using uh, connectors. And these connectors, um, they're connectors available for all, for, all, for all sorts of systems, and you can build your own connectors, again, by using Java. There's a Java API which you have to implement, some interfaces, and then you can also write your own connector if an, a certain product you want to integrate uh, Kafka with or integrate with Kafka uh, is not available as a connector. But first, of course, always look for a connector. Is it already available? And then, of course, use that. It's much less work. Um, if you use a connector, then all you have to do is um, call the API on the connector framework, it's the REST API, and provide basically the data which is necessary uh, to connect for, to a database, for example. You have to provide the JDBC connection string, username, password, and you have to provide the topic uh, where you want to write to. So by that, you could, for example, say, I want to query a relational database for new records, and whenever a new record arrives, I want to put it into a Kafka topic. And then sync connectors is just the opposite. You can take a Kafka topic and move it out, for example, to Elasticsearch. If you have results in Kafka available, which you want to add to Elasticsearch so people can search uh, via Elasticsearch, you can use a sync connector for that. And in between, you have Kafka, and of course, you have to do something with the data which is in a Kafka topic. And again, you can write your own program, your own program in Java, and just implement the consumer, implement the producer, and implement the whole logic which you want to do on an event, for in my case, the geofencing. Or you can use um, Kafka Streams or KSQL. Kafka Streams is a stream processing framework or yeah, framework library, which is again part of the Kafka open source project. And with that, you can write your stream processing solutions again using Java. It's a Java library. You can integrate it. In, 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 in a Java application you already have, or if you write a new Java application, you can add just that library and then you have the whole stream processing capability with it. The downside is you need to be a Java programmer and you have to program in order to use it. And because not everybody is a Java programmer and if your problem is a bit structured or is structured, then maybe uh, something like SQL, or in that case, KSQL, um, could be interesting or could be more interesting because then uh, you can just use your SQL knowledge and you will you, you write uh, the processing you want to do in, in a SQL-like language. That's KSQL. So here, let's say we have topics in Kafka. Then what you will do is you will add, you will create a stream on top of a topic, give that stream a name, and specify how that stream maps to a topic, we'll see an example just in a minute, and then you can do a select on that stream. So by just using SQL know-how, you can do select from stream, and 
add a where clause, for example, do some joins uh, using SQL. And in order to write something to a topic, because you can see that's uh, the loop in with these red parts, the idea is that you consume uh, from a topic, do something, and then produce your new knowledge or the, the results you got back into another Kafka topic. And in a, in a SQL-like way, it's just an insert which you do, an insert as select. So you can do insert into a new topic as select from another topic, basically. And that's very important uh, in the, the view of the Kafka uh, people. They, they see this red box as consuming from Kafka, do something, and producing into Kafka again. In Kafka Streams, because it's Java, you could theoret theoretically also write out into a database directly from the red, so, doing a, an, so skipping the, this sync connector. But then you work against the framework, and that's never a good, good idea to work against the framework. You should try to keep the idea which they had and, and stick with it. So writing back into topic and then writing out to um, uh, Elasticsearch, for example, or a rational database, you would do that with the sync connector. And maybe one, two more words for, uh, around Kafka Broker. Uh, as I mentioned, it's publish, subscribe. You have topics. And now you could say or ask, why do I need something new? Uh, we had topics in the past. Uh, Kafka is just much more scalable and much more reliable than a traditional message broker. That's basically uh, the story around it. That's also why it's so popular uh, with traditional message brokers. There was maybe an end uh, around 200, 300 messages per second on a topic which is persisted. You couldn't go further because it's a single machine. And, um, and I, I'm talking about persistent messages and not messages in memory. And we had that in a, a situation. Maybe we could go to 500 messages. But with Kafka, uh, thousands, one, uh, 100,000, even millions of messages per second are definitely possible, not on one single machine. In, uh, to get that, you need multiple machines. You need a cluster. But it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's built on the scale-out idea, so you just add more machines and you get more power, basically. Good. So that's Kafka. So now what I will show you is um, this kind of little use case um, we have on the left the, the producers. So we have this vehicle truck simulator, which just produces uh, positions. Uh, the idea is then you have geofences, which you can manage maybe over a database. Uh, I'm not really showing that or not having that in, in the in the talk, I'm just uh, starting here with the geofence topic. So the idea is all the geofences um, which are in the system or which, which I should uh, take into account are in one topic. And all the positions which constantly get updated or get new messages uh, are in that uh, topic here. So now from a, from a very um, yeah, far away, uh, or, or the idea I would or what I would like to do is basically join uh, a position to the geofence where I might be in or where I might be near to it. And of course, I would like to do that in an efficient manner, because if I have thousands of geofences in a larger system, uh, the question is, do I have to join each single position to all these thousands uh, of positions? Uh, uh, even if a position is in Switzerland and my truck is in Canada, does that make sense or not? Or could I just kind of downsize it a bit so I only take uh, geofences which are, uh, which are near to me uh, into the join? And if I have a join uh, with position and geofences, I can check if I'm in the geofence and then, of course, provide the status, status like entered and exit. Because at the end, this is what's important. Do I enter? a geofence or do I exit a geofence in for a lot of use cases. So it's kind of a filtering, but a filtering based on yeah, geofences which I have, then deciding if I'm yeah, near, if I'm entering, if I'm exiting, and then producing these events as a result. So first I will start uh, showing you in KSQL. I will do that on, on slides only, but I have uh, code in the slides. And I'm not just showing you 
what has worked. I'm also showing you what did not work or, and my, the thought proce process behind. Maybe for those of you who have already used, or there are not a lot who have used KSQL, uh, you would think, why, why on earth did I do that? But it's, it was really the, I, I'm coming from, that's maybe important, I'm, I have a, quite a, a huge relational database background. And of course, with that, you get a lot of SQL know-how knowledge. I guess you have quite a lot of SQL knowledge as well. And then you get something which is similar to SQL, and you have, yeah, you still have your SQL know-how in, 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 in your mind, in your head, and you try to apply that. And not everything which works in SQL works in KSQL. And so what you have to do first before you can start is you have to give the topic basically a, a face. In, in a, Kaf a Kafka topic, it's just binary. Kafka, the Kafka broker, doesn't know about what kind of format or what kind of messages a producer is producing or a consumer is consuming. It's just byte stream. And in order to use something like uh, KSQL or uh, a SQL-like dialect, the S stands for structured, structured query language. So you have to provide a structure first. For those of you who know Hive in the big data world or Presto or similar things, uh, there is a similar concept where you have to do a create table on an uh, HDFS file and here you can do a create table or create stream on a topic and by using that you have to specify the format. So value format in that case is delimited in that uh, sample here. That means it's a comma separate uh, um, uh, value or comma separated message and the first value in the message in the stream is an ID and the second one is latitude and the third one is longitude. So this is what I get from the vehicles. Um, they sent me an ID, latitude and longitude. And I also, also have to specify of course which topic I want to consume. The geofence is not a stream, the geofence is a table. Why is it a table or what is the difference? Stream is really I get New uh, events and events are always immutable. So every position is kind of a new event which I can consume from that stream. In case of a table, uh, a table is, 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 is good for um, kind of static information where you get updates. So here the idea is a table will hold my geofences and the key you see here, key is the ID, ID of the geofence, kind of the primary key. And if I specify that this is a table, then updates will replace previous information in the table. In the table, um, you get updates which replace, so it's mutable information. So if you query a table, uh, you can think of it's, it's just uh, data stored in a cache, and the cache is updatable. So by that, you get a cache of all the geofences which are defined. And when somebody is updating a geofence, there's of course a question, can I really update the geofence? Isn't that kind of static as well? But it might happen that somebody is redrawing the polygon and says this is the new geofence. Then the geofence would be updated here and replace uh, the old information. In a stream, uh, it would be treated as an event and you would just get a new event. So that's the two possibilities you have. Now, how can I determine in KSQL if I'm inside or outside? The only, I mean, KSQL has some functions as well, as similar to SQL where you have functions. And there is one function called geodistance. That's all you have. And well, geodistance would not be good enough, but what you can do is you can create your own user-defined functions I already mentioned. And this is uh, one function I created, geofence, and I can just pass latitude, longitude, and one polygon. And I also have a geofence bulk to pass the latitude, longitude. So the idea is I'm passing the point I got from the position message or from the position topic, and I'm passing one or, in that case, multiple polygons. And I just want to know in which um, uh, I'm in, if I'm in the geofence inside or outside. So if I have this geofence function, I can use it similar to any other functions 
uh, in, the, in the expression list, I can say select geofence, latitude, longitude, and just the polygon, and I will get, uh, yeah, as a result, outside, inside, in a case. So I, I'm just kind of enriching uh, the stream I get um, with this new information. And that's quite simple to write UDFs. UDFs uh, at the end, it's just a class you implement in Java, and the, the complex part is actually the business logic. So how do you uh, how do you find out latitude, longitude is inside or outside the geometry? And for that, I've used these geo tools. I'm not going into details here. It's just uh, Java code which you add, and then you compile that. You get a char, and you put that char on the KSQL server, and then it's usable um, for everybody who's who has access to that KSQL server. So it's an interesting concept. Also, if you if you want to give uh, KSQL also to people who are not familiar to, with Java, and it's the whole idea that somebody which cannot program might be able to do some stream processing uh, logic. Then you can extend what he's capable of doing by writing some UDFs. And of course, that has to be a Java programmer, but you can ex extend the functionality in an easy way. It's every, all frameworks which have UDFs, is, the UDF is always the same idea to, to extend. And the reason why I tried geofencing first with KSQL is the whole idea of having somebody who is capable of writing SQL code. Um, can he use KSQL to do geofencing, or is it uh, difficult or not, not possible? So my first, uh, uh, first idea or the first um, solution I tried to implement is just doing a cross-join, because that's at the end, what I want to do, I have stream with one position, and I just would like to cross-join it to all geofences I have. Of course, not very efficient, but then I would get for each position all the, the geofences, and I could provide it to that bulk uh, UDF and just ask if yeah, which geofences are are are, are, are which one I'm inside or outside. That doesn't work in KSQL. You can do joins, but there's no cross-join. You basically, when you do joins, um, the joins have to be equal joins. Only equal joins are possible. So, um, so even the next uh, test I tried, when I'm doing an, an join, an, an inner join, um, does not work. So um, the idea here was. To, to create an artificial primary key. Because if I do an inner join, I need to know uh, yeah, the join criteria. And I don't have a join criteria for an inner join from the geo fences uh, and the position. The position has a vehicle ID, but of course the geo fences are not primary keyed or they don't have a key uh, vehicle ID. They have a, they have a key um, geo fence ID. And I thought, let's just create an artif artificial group so group one, and I group every geofences into the same group, and I add that group to each position, just in order to do an inner join. That would technically work, but I cannot insert that into a table. So if I have a stream and I manipulate that stream, I can no longer put that into a table, which I wanted to do, or which I need to do. What do you mean by geofences stream? Uh, it's a table, right? Yeah. Stream? The problem is, yeah, I have a table and make uh, I, I, I make a stream out of it, but then I cannot return it into a table again. That's the problem. Yeah. But what you can do, or what works, is um, aggregating it before doing the join. So group, the group ID is, is, was correct or, or, or ca works, but what you have to do is bring your geofences, which is a list of geofences in the same group. I mean, if I only have one group and I have thousands, thousand geofences, I would have a, a list of, of, of thousand. Um, and just aggregating them into one single row, and 
that row having a list of polygons. So a list of 1,000 polygons, if I have 1,000 geofences. And then, so that's what you see here. So I'm doing an aggregate, and I'm only getting one row out of it here. And then the, the join works directly between one row and a position uh, which has ID 1 as well. The problem is, and now I'm adding these kind of uh, uh, metrics here, it's not very scalable because yeah, if I have thousands of geofences, I have one row with this whole huge list and I have to go through all of these uh, geofences just to see, yeah, I, I, am I really near to it or is it far away, is it in Switzerland? <clears throat> The lat latency is kind of okay. It's also slower because I have this huge list I have to go through for each single point. And um, yeah, from a code smell, is it, does it look uh, okay? Uh, I think it's, it, it would be okay. So this is the, this is the code um, behind. Um, let me see. This is the, the one where I'm doing a group by. So we can do a group by group ID. So this is the one. And by doing a collect set, you can just create a set with all, yeah, all, the, all, the, all the geofences. That's exactly what, what, the, what you have seen before uh, on, the, on the message. So this is producing that information here. <clears throat> And then I can do, I can use the geofence bulk here with this list I produced with latitude and longitude. And I will also get a list back of yeah, outside, inside. So the result will hold for each polygon I'm passing here, either outside or inside as a whole list. So if I have 1,000 polygons, this list, this re the result I will get back would also be uh, a long list. <clears throat> so it's not very scalable because I only have one group, but there's an, and, and that was the idea. I, I showed this group to make it uh, hopefully a bit clearer what I'm, what I, what I, where I go now um, with using geohashes. Geohashes is a way uh, to get from a coordinate a single item, a geohash. So I can hash a coordinate and I have to, by providing the lengths of uh, my hash, I can control the precision. So here, this is Europe, uh, this is Berlin, this is Germany, because the, the sample I'm using here is, uh, is in Berlin, um, because I've done that talk for a German uh, uh, conference and I've, I have not changed it. Um, so when you when you create a, a geo hash, then a geo hash covers a certain area of, 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 of a map. And depending on the length, that area is larger or smaller. So now with length three, you can see the area is, it, it, oops, the area is, is sorry, is, is the area here. If I'm going, and U33 is here, the red, and U33, 337 is only is, is much smaller, the blue area. And you can see the length with length 3, so U33 would be around 165 kilometers uh, times 165 kilometers. <clears throat> so by that, you can, you can, you can get um, areas, smaller areas, and if I have a position and I calculate the geohash for a position, then, then I know in which geohash that position is currently. And if, if I do the same for my polygons, and of course a polygon can be, maybe a polygon along, around Berlin would cover multiple geohashes. So I would get a list of geohashes which this polygon uh, is in or covers or overlaps. And then, I'm, then I have kind of an index where I can say if a position is in U337, if I'm using length 4, I only have to retrieve the polygons 
which are also covered or are, 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 are overlapping that geofence. And then, for example, Canada or US polygons, they would be far away, they will not be treated. So it's th still the same idea of a group, but now my group is, a, is the geohash. And in order to work with geohashes, I had to extend k equal again. I'm providing a UDF geohash, which just returns me um, for a certain length and a, uh, and a latitude longitude. A coordinate returns me um, a geohash. You can see it here in use. So latitude longitude geohash, latitude longitude three. I'm getting back uh, that geohash for that coordinate. And I also uh, written the, the same geo hash for a geomet geometry. So here I can pass a polygon. You can see the polygon here. And then I'm first creating or calculating the, the bounding box around the polygon. And then for that bounding box, I'm just calculating all hashes or all geo hashes, which, um, yeah, which this polygon covers, which you can see here. Now with here is resolution five. Uh, it looks like that. Of course, if you do that, then the resolution, the, the, the length has to be the same for position and, and polygon in, 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 uh, when you want to do the join. Otherwise, it won't, won't work. And this is, exa is exactly what I'm doing now. I replaced the old, um, uh, what was it, group by geohash. So for each polygon, I'm creating or I'm adding or extending, enriching the the geohash, whenever I get a new position, I'm extending, enriching it by the geohash. For a position that's very quick, for the geofences, I basically only have to do it once. Whenever a geofence is added to the system, I just have to calculate the geohash, but it's also not a lot, or the geohashes, it's not only one, it's multiple ones. And then I do again an aggregation. So I group by geohash, and now I have, for each geohash, I have the set of polygons which uh, this geohash contains or covers. And then I can do the join on a geohash. Why is that better in terms of scalability? It's better um, when you know a bit more of, of Kafka and how Kafka scales. Kafka scales by using partitions. So I've only talked about the topic so far, but Kafka, a Kafka topic has multiple partitions, and that's basically how Kafka scales. Uh, if I only have one partition, and that's possible in a topic, then I can only have one single consumer consuming from that topic. I can have still multiple producers, but only one can consume from that topic, only one logical consumer or only one thread. Of course, you can have, it's published subscribed. You can have multiple consumers doing uh, separate work. But if you want to scale one single consumer, then you need multiple processes or multiple threads consuming from that topic. And you can now only start as many threads as you have partitions. But you can add multi more, more than one partition. You can have a topic with 20 partitions or Eight in my case, I have eight partitions. And if you have eight partitions, then you can have eight parallel consumers for one logical consumer, eight threads consuming from it. And you have control when you produce in which partition a certain message will go, if you want. And this is the key. If you produce a message in Kafka with a key, plus a value, value is the payload key, is optional, and if you use that key, then you can make sure that uh, uh, if you use the same key, then that message will go always into the same partition, or, or for, for example, yeah, using the key uh, U33 as a key means um, position, which is in geohash U33, will always end up in the same partition. And if I have another position, which is in geohash, a22, then that might go to another partition. And if I partition the outcome of the positions, so this topic here, if that's partitioned in the same way as this one here, and this is basically the only way part, uh, a join works, 
a join is always equal, and a join is always equal on, on partition level. It's always a partition level join. It's not a topic join, it's a partition level join. So partition one of this topic here is joined to partition one of this topic, partition two to partition two, and so on. And if I'm using the same key, if I'm using geohash here as a key and here, yeah, by, by joining these, the, 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 the partition one and partition one of, of each of the, these two topics, uh, then it's, th th then the, um, um, yeah, the geohashes will find itself uh, when doing the join. And now I can, I, can, I can add multiple consumers. So if I have eight partitions, I can do the whole thing with parallel factor eight. So that's why this solution here is much scalable, much more scalable. <clears throat> so I skip the, the code here. It's similar to the one we had before. <clears throat> and now the question is, um, how do I produce that information to the geofence uh, status topic? So I need or I want to have a topic where I get this information inside, outside. And one way of doing it uh, is by using another UDF, but that's not, that's not clean, and that's why the code smell here is too red, too high. Uh, I, I, would not, I would not do that in, in real life, but I just wanted to show you that it is possible, of course, you can, you can write a UDF, which can also produce into a Kafka topic. And what that would simplify is, um, I still have to show you one thing, because I'm grouping, I'm aggregating the, the geofences into, uh, by geohash. So I have, for a geohash, a, a, a geohash, I might have multiple polygons in that geohash, multiple geofences. And from the join, what I get is, you can see here, I get a list of all the geofences which map to that geohash of, of the position. So it's a long list, and I would like to flatten that long list because I need to know for each um, polygon, I would like to have one single message, I'm inside or outside that polygon. So that flattening could be easily done by just in a, by in a UDF, by just looping over that list and producing single messages to that topic. So that's possible, but as I mentioned, it's not clean. The other way is just flattening it again by using k-sql, so exploding it, just turning it uh, around, and then producing messages. But yeah, th that is possible, but there's no flattening operation, so you have to do it with multiple uh, insert into and taking each one taking one position of the list. And if you see that, zero, one, I would also have to do one for two, one for three, one for four, and I basically have to de decide how long is my, my array. And, and, and I have to provide as many inserts as there are elements in the array. And with all that code, you, can prob you probably ask yourself, why do I show you all that? Uh, I, I hope maybe if you're new to KSQL, it was quite hard uh, to, to see. But at the end, if you, if you see that, that result, uh, you might ask yourself, where is the advantage of using KSQL? Because is it, is, it, is it so easy that somebody which only has SQL knowledge is capable of, of doing that, of repeating that? And I think it's, it's it, 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 it's 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 KSQL is, is 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 good, but as soon as it starts to get complicated with collect uh, with, with sets, so if you add a yeah a set and then you 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 try to uh, turn it around, explode it, uh, there there is the, the language is not is not good enough, it's not capable enough of doing that for single structured problems. It's not. It, it, it's very good, KSQL, but um, for what I'm doing here, I think it's, it's somewhere at the edge 
I, I'm, yeah, I'm happy uh, to, do, to do it again in a way, but I think it's on the edge where it makes sense to think about Kafka streams. And I can show you that uh, in a minute as well. And it has another problem, what I showed you. And to be honest, I only found that out in the customer project. I didn't, I didn't realize that when I did the KSQL POC. Um, because of the GeoHash and because of the repartitioning on, on GeoHash level, you lose the order of position messages. Because the whole Kafka can, 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 can guarantee order of messages by, again, making sure that messages end up in the same partition all the time. And now, if I have a truck which has that red route and these points are the positions I get, and if I produce the messages from the truck using the truck ID as a key, then I, by that I make sure that all position messages for the same truck will end up in the same partition. In the effect, as a consumer, if I consume that partition, I have to guarantee that the messages I, pro I consume will be in the right order, in the order which, how they arrived. And because I changed the partitioning for the join, I kind of repartitioned the whole thing by geohash. Now, this is one partition, this is another partition, maybe, this one is another partition, this is one another partition. And so the partition, so, so the position will, will kind of leave a partition, oops, and then end up in a new partition, and then end up again in a new partition. And by that, they might also change the consumer. And this is not a problem, and that's also why I didn't realize it. Um, this is not a problem when your system is working uh, normally. This starts to get problematic where there, when there is a backlog on a certain partition. Because now maybe you have a backlog here, so these, this position here is not yet consumed by that consumer because he's on the heavy load. And now that position is also produced, this one is produced, because it's in order, it will, be, it will be added to the backlog. But now, the next position, this one here, is no longer in that partition where there's a backlog. It's added or sent to a new partition, which has no work at all. So that consumer will pick it up uh, uh, will pick it up as soon as possible or, or immediately, and will calculate its result. And now you have kind of over, yeah. You have like one position before the others, and then it doesn't make sense, the result you get. So that's, that's the difficulty of, of, of stream processing and making it scalable, and, 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 and another to think about, yeah, I have state, and I have to make sure that the position I get or the information I get is in the right order. So let me spend the last five minutes on the Kafka streams implementation, and I will skip the tile 38, or maybe just mention it quickly, what it is. Um, with Kafka Streams, you have to program uh, Java, but you have much more flexibility, of course, with Java, because you can do what, whatever you want. You don't, you're not stick to that SQL-like language. And the, the concept is still more or less uh, the same, but I'm replacing the table of, of geofences by a so-called global K table. And the global K table is no longer by partition. A global K table is global, as it says. So by that, I don't have my, I still have my geofences by geohash. So this grouping is still existing. But using a global K table, I'm just holding that information globally. So even if I scale out, even if I have at the end eight partitions here and eight partitions here, and I have this guy here running eight times with eight threads, each thread will hold the complete picture of that global K table. So it will hold all the G offenses. 
But when I'm doing the join here, the join is, 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 is still more efficient than just the cross join because when I'm doing the join, I have to specify to which entry in the global K table I want to join. So I'm still specifying I want to join it to U33. And here in the global K table, I have one entry for U33, but I also have one entry for U32 for A22. So there are much more entries, but I'm only joining it to one entry. So the join or the result I get back is still a reduced set, only the polygons which matches this uh, geo hash. The downside is just I need more memory because it's a global K table and it's, it's, yeah, it's just a cache which sits in each single process which I'm running. But I still had or still added the scalability to, to high because it's just a question at the end, how many geofences do we really have? I mean, if it's millions of geofences, it might be a problem. But if you have uh, a, a few thousands, I, I think I've not measured it, to be honest, yet. Uh, there is also some, some room uh, of advantage here or, or to improve um, by not holding the, the string, the, the WKT um, string for the geofence. By, by, um, yeah, by, by making that bit smaller, um, the, the memory uh, constraint or the memory size, the, the memory I need uh, can be reduced here as well. So I think it's, it's a feasible solution. It, it really just comes down to how, how large is your, is your set of, of polygons, your set of, of geofences. <clears throat> and then I have the I basically get, get out, um, again, position and all the geofences where I have a match. I produce them into the match geofences and then I have a detect geo event which just compares the state before and the state after and produces the, the enter or exit events. So this is, might be a bit small, but I just wanted to give you an impression uh, of how such a stream processor looks like. This is the one who's producing, uh, this, this is the one up here, the one who reads the geofences and produce the aggregation. So here um, I'm, uh, this part here is, is consuming the topic. Um, this one is creating the bounding box and calculates the, the geo hash. And this one here is, at the end, uh, the aggregation. So it's, it's, for those of you who know Java, it's, it's, it's um, a library which, uses, which heavily uses uh, um, types and, um, what is it, generics, <laughs> generic. Um, and by that, it's, it's type safe. And it's, it was the first time that I used Kafka Streams before I did most of the work with KSQL. And there is an, kind of an entry. You have to, you have to pass, uh, kind of an entry level. Uh, you have to pass. But um, if you have done that, then you're very, it's, it's, very, it's a very powerful framework and you're very fast. Uh, I've done work in stream processing with other frameworks which are not type safe at compile time. And I always, I always got, of course, runtime errors. Here, when you can compile it, uh, you're almost sure that it, that it works. And so we, we, we spent three weeks uh, at the customer doing that POC. And um, it was quite interesting to see how, how quick we were able to, to develop. And also, we have not done everything uh, right at the beginning. It was also quite easy to refactor solutions um, I think even easier than if you're using KSQL and have many different kind of KSQL statements. I think KSQL is fine, but as soon as it gets complex or you, you have complex statements, um, then yeah, you might want to think about, uh, yeah, should I not, or is Kafka Streams not a better option? Another maybe point to make before uh, yeah, the end, the time is, 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 is off. Um, you can also use KSQL to do prototyping. I think for that it's also interesting. 
So do the prototype with KSQL, and if you're happy with the solution, then move it over to Kafka Stream. If, it's, if it gets too complicated. And of course, there's a world where both uh, can coexist. KSQL, maybe more business analyst people are using KSQL, and um, Kafka Streams, yeah, programmers uh, using it to do stuff which uh, yeah, business people are not capable of doing or don't want to do. Good. So maybe one, one slide to tile 38. Tile 38 is an open source geospatial database and geofencing server. It's a, it's a total different idea, and that's why I moved it to the, uh, to the end. Um, if you, it, it's similar to, to a NoSQL database, or it's similar to Redis, if you know Redis as a NoSQL database. You just install it, and then you can ask that server um, with a, ge you add geofences to it with a set operation, and then you can ask with a position the geofence or the, 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 the geospatial server, um, and he will return you a res result. Is that position inside or outside? So it's more like a service, and of course you can integrate that into a stream processing solution as well. Uh, the way you do that is uh, you just add a topic as, as like an input to it. So that's uh, what, how I did it. And you can ask or you can tell Tile38 to produce results into another Kafka topic. So by that, you would treat it, you, you would kind of encapsulate it as a service, and, and the service will do everything for, for, for would, do, would do the work for you. And what I showed you before with Kafka Streams and KSQL, the work was kind of custom uh, implemented. Good, so that brings me to the end. Visualization I'll skip as well, uh, including the demo. So summary. Uh, it's definitely doable, so that was also the exercise uh, for myself uh, with KSQL. Is it doable with KSQL? Yes, it is. It has uh, some downside, as I explained. I think the, the solution I have now with Kafka Streams is much uh, better, and that's the, way, the one I would use in a real-life project as well. That might also be the, what the customer is doing now. Um, uh, he, for him, it was also just a proof of concept, but he... Um, you're thinking now about moving in, into a real life uh, project and then into production. Um, there's some work I still want to do. Um, I have to clean it up, uh, add some performance tests, and it's already on GitHub, on my GitHub, so if you're interested, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned, some cleanups are necessary, and I will add the link to the GitHub to the slides, um, which you will get, so if you wanna try it out, uh, yeah, the code will be there. And I will also write instructions of how uh, to repeat it. Okay, thanks for your time. Um, and if you have questions, I'm available the whole day. Uh, I'm only here today. Um, yeah, but feel free to, to reach me whenever you want. Good, thank you.